got to do is to get a sign writer in. That thing above the door will have to be changed. It's funny having my name over my own shop. Florrie Lindley, licensed... Florence, you mean? Hey. Well, that's your real name, isn't it? Oh, yes, but nobody ever uses it. Come to that, I've got another one, too. That'll have to go up outside, then. Whatever for? Well, it's the law. Florence Lena Lindley. <laughs> Sounds like an embrication. The patent medicine man calls Thursday. Now, you'll have to watch him. He could sell sand to the Arabs. I'll remember that. There's more to it than you'd think, isn't there? Oh, you'll soon get into the way of it. Whatever are you doing that for? Well, I thought it might encourage folk to buy. Well, of course, it's up to you now, but it's always been my experience. They come in here with their minds ready made up. Well, I think it's worth a try. The governor at the Farrier's Arms, he always said that when we hung peanuts up behind the bar, they went twice as quick. If we waited till folks asked for them, they'd have gone bad on us. I wonder you never fancied a pub of your own. I was very surprised when our Sheila told me you were first interested in this. Mm, you wouldn't get me in no pub of my own. No, a little business like this is just up my street. Just what I've been looking for. Mrs. Lappin, I do appreciate you staying on while I get in the run of things. You know how it is when you come to a new street. You don't know anyone or what to look out for. Oh, Coronation Street's all right. Mind, there's some you'll have to watch. What happens if they ask me for tick? I used to have a notice up there. Please do not ask for credit as a refusal often offends. Where's it gone? They asked just the same. <laughs> So I took it down. It's in the back. No, a bit on the slate's not a bad thing. If you didn't let some of them have it, they wouldn't spend nearly as much. Mind you, uh, you'll have to choose your customers. Now, for a start, the tanner's at number 11. If you'll take my advice, you won't let them go a penny over ten bob. If you do, you won't see sight and a sound of them from one week's end to the other. The tanner's of number 11. I remember that. Oh, hello, Linda. Not gone back then yet? I brought you some empties. Oh, and I want a quarter of boiled ham. Uh, you've not met Mrs. Lindley, have you? Mm. Uh, this is Linda Chavesky. She married a Paul. Linda Tanner, that was. Hello. How's your mother, love? Oh, she's not too bad now, thanks. The back before. Please, Come on, Dennis Tanner, where is it? Where's what? Don't come here, Mr. Whitley. You know as well as I do. I don't know what you're talking about. Two bob gone out of my purse. That's what I'm talking about. Well, what are you looking at me for? It's not to do with me. Oh, well, I suppose some Mayfair cat burglar called in and nicked it. Come here. Yeah. Now, look. Let's get this straight. Not an hour ago, you asked me for two bob for cigarettes. And you wouldn't give it me, we know. So you're stuck to going in a lady's handbag. Just listen it. A lady. Is that what you crack on you are these days? Fine son. A fine son you are. That tongue of yours will get you on one of these oh, days. Oh, give over. Luke, you've lost two bob. I don't know where it is. What am I supposed to do about get it? Get work. Get work. That's what you're supposed to do about it. Change record, will you? Did you go down to the labour today? I'm not due till tomorrow. You know what your trouble is, don't you? You just don't want work. Did you bother to look through the adverts in the newspapers? What papers? We only get the one in the morning. There's nothing in that you know there isn't. Oh, you could have gone down to the reading room, couldn't you? Here am I, working yourself to death, and you can't even stir yourself to go and look through a newspaper. Well, what sort of job would they have for me? There's plenty of jobs for them that take the trouble to look for them. Yeah, and they ask you what experience you've had. Well, you've had experience. Not the right kind. They'll just drop it. No, I won't. It's the same every Luke! time. Luke! You know as well as I do why I can't get a job. Been out of that place seven weeks now. Oh, don't let's wrap it up. If you mean prison, say it. Everyone else does. You can't go on like this. Well, what am I supposed to? Just tell me that. Oh, why are it to be me that I have a son like you? I suppose you'd rather have me like Kenneth Barlow at number three. And what's wrong with him? Let me tell you something. He'll have no trouble getting a job because he's got it up here, in the upper story, and that's where it counts. I sometimes wish you were more like them Barlows. At least they're not rowing all the time. You always loved it when you was little. Oh, did I? What's up? Nothing. But that's new to your expression for, then? Well, what's new to your expression? That new pullover's turned out a treat. Mm. Mind you, I'll not knit you another one in that colour, though. Navy blue plays the devil with me eyes. Oh, no. Don't they do this at college, then? I bet they don't eat in the shirt sleeves, either. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, I've been noticing you looking at me. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. We're not good enough for Look, I never said a word and he starts. Look, Dad, can't we have one meal in peace for a change? Now, you know he doesn't like to hear you call me Dad. It's common. Oh, give over the pair of you. My back sat it against something off. Ah, that's what comes to doing that rotten job of yours. I bet you don't tell your iron mighty pals that, eh, Ken? What? Where your mother works. Well, it's no secret. 
She worked in hotel kitchen. If anyone asked me, of course I'd tell them. What's got into you, Frank? You're edgy enough for six. What's up with you then? Go on, blame me. I would. It's him. Why do we have to have the bread ready buttered? Hey? Well, he said that yesterday. And then again tonight. Why do we have to have cups of tea with our food? Well, I'll tell you for why. I like my food swilled down properly, that's why. <laughs> You'd better watch out, Ida. You'll be having to change into evening gown to eat your meals next. Oh, look at that clock, wherever can David have got to? Huh. Uh, did you go into town this afternoon? Yes. Oh, uh, I got a record. One I'd like. You might, I'm not sure. Oh, well, you know me. I've always been one for a bit of good music. Well, put it on when we've washed up and your dad's had his sleep. Huh. Oh, if David doesn't hurry, that chopper of his will have gone bone dry in the oven. Oh, by the way, uh, I should be going out later on. Oh, you... Are you meeting a girl? Yes. Oh. It's uh, just a girl that's in my ear. The one you have the letter from this morning? Mm. Does she come from round here? Not far away, the other side of town. Oh, will you be going over to their place then? No, just into town. Whereabouts are you meeting her? The Imperial. Oh. Where? The Imperial Hotel. Now listen here, Squire. You best make up your mind to it because you're not going throwing no money away at no Imperial Hotel. What do you mean, no Imperial Hotel? I mean, what I'm saying, don't you come correcting me. Look, I'm not asking you for any money. Oh, yes, you've got the money, but where did it come from? Frank, do we have to go through all now, this? Now look, Adam, I'm not having you working in those stinking kitchens at the Imperial for him to go chucking money back at places that they big growing trees. It's downright wicked, that's what it is. Well, he won't be going spending much, will you, love? Well, you can make up your mind to it, can you? are not going at all. Hello, Ma. And what time do you call this? Yeah, I've had another puncher. Hey, which one this time? Front. Thought it was just the valve at first. Well, the sooner you get short of that old ruin, the better. Mm. Why, well, things only fit for scrap yard. Oh, don't worry. That's just where it's going, the minute I've got enough for deposit. Deposit? What on? What do you think on? A motorbike, of course. Over my dead body. <laughs> Is it raining? Well, I was a minute or two ago. Just stopped. Oh, well, I'll go and have a look at this bike of yours. Oh, it's all right, Dad. I'll see to it. Well, where's your puncture outfit? Well, it's in my saddle bag, but I told you I'll see to it. Right. How are you? All right. Do you want gravy? I wouldn't mind. Well, you'll have to wait while I warm it up, then. Something up, Cam? Oh, no. Just had a bit of a set, too. Huh? What about this time? Well, I uh, let out I'm supposed to meet in the girl at the Imperial Hotel. Oh, heck. You can imagine what that started. genius then. All right. I've not seen your name in paper recently. Haven't you been winning any more scholarships? It's all right for some. What are you up to these days? Damn all. Do you mind a in ten? Oh, that'd be all right. That'll be four and a penny. Here's your mile. Hang on. It's here somewhere. I'll have twenty pegs too. That'll be four and seven pence even altogether. That's foot mile. I'll give you a bit of six another time. I'm afraid you won't. What's up? Don't you trust me or something? No, it's got nothing to do with it whatsoever. It's the rule of the house. Rule of the house. Here. Tom? Well, it's government's money really, isn't it? See ya. Whatever did you want to do that for? You don't want to go wasting your sympathy on him. It's Elsie I'm sorry for. Ooh, some mothers do have them. Hey, Elsie. You're just about ready for the knacky yard. Do 
Did you say Christine Farrer? Where did I see your mother? Kids. I'm sick to death of them clattering about in my back in. There's nowhere else for them to play. Well, the council should do something about it. Wouldn't go saying that too loud if I were you. They might turn this into a play street and then where'd you be? Hmm. Oh, there's your arm. Oh, how much do I owe you? Nothing. Oh, don't be so daft. Where's my purse? No, I mean it. You don't owe me anything. I took two bob out your purse before I went. Oh, well. What's wrong? Talk about give a dog a bad name. I have just wrongly accused your little brother. And you're a bit of a madam, you know. Fancy going in my purse with that as much as a buy your leave. Well, I didn't have any change. I didn't want to go breaking into a note. Well, you could have asked her to write it down, couldn't you? a new woman I didn't like. Oh, ma'am, if that's how you feel about it, I'll give you it to Bob. Oh, give over. <sighs> oh, Linda. I know what we're going to do. What about? Our kid. Mm. How much has he done about getting a job? I mean... Has he been there at prisoner's aid yet? You know, three of us can't manage on what I earn. Do you mean three of us? I'm only here for the week. Are you? Well, yes. Come on. Out with it. You've left him, haven't you? I suppose I have, really. Well, why? So I just didn't like being called Mrs. Chavesky. How'd you find out? I didn't. I just guessed. Well? What happened? He had a bust up. Well, what over? Oh, I don't know. We've had that many recently, we never stop having them. Is that moody? Oh, well, foreigners are. Are you sure that's all it is? That's all. You haven't been doing anything you shouldn't, have you? What do you mean? Oh, well, you're not a kid anymore. It's no secret round here why your dad left me. Well, it's me that's done the leaving this time. I've left Ivan. I'm not going back And now. what are you going to do? Get a job, I suppose. Oh, and where will you live? Well, I can't go back, Mum, I can't. You don't know what he's like when he gets one of his moods on him. You're frightened what he might do. Are you really set on this? Oh, well. You know you're welcome here if you want to stay. But try and get on a bit with our Dennis. For all I go at him, he's not had it easy, you know. What about your clothes? Did he bring things? <laughs> Most of them. Oh, now we know what that dirty great suitcase was in here. You'll have to get a job, you know that, don't you? Anything going at your place? Mm, not in our department. A couple of girls left in millinery the other day. I'll look into that tomorrow. Well, I suppose we have to be grateful for small mercies. At least the arm's not off. Mum? What? Shall I go blonde? Well, why ask me if you want to go blonde? Blonde, you'll go blonde, you know that. I would nearly went mad when he found a bottle of peroxide I brought in. I wouldn't care, but it would have wanted to take a mark off my front tooth. You might not know it, but he's very narrow-minded. I seem to have heard you say that before. When those new short skirts first come in, I had to take mine up inch by inch on sly. Why? So as he wouldn't know. He said he didn't want fellas staring at my legs. Well, they're nothing all that marvellous. What do you mean? Well, your legs. I'm afraid you've the sad tanner side of the family to thank for that. You know, without a word of a lie, your Grandma Tanner was that bandy she couldn't have stopped a pig in an entry. Well, I'm not bandy. Hey, am I? Hey, you flip. No, seriously. Oh, I've told you. Do you think there will be a job at your place? Well, there won't be anything permanent, but they're bound to be looking for staff for Christmas. Well, what do I do after Christmas? Well, you've had a time to think things out by then. You think I'll go back to him, don't you? Well, you've been back to him before. We have been all through this before, you know. That's all you know. All I know is that three months after you were married, you came flying back here with all your bed in a flight of plaster ducks and a brass companion set. That's all I know. It's different this time. Oh, yes, I see. No, it is, honest. All oh, right, sure. I'm trying to have a bit of a read. Mum. What? Nothing doesn't matter. Well, what? Nothing. You get on with your reading. It said it doesn't matter. What do you think to that new woman? One at shop. Mm. Doesn't seem to have much to say for herself. So that made you think of retiring to not end? It's a bit bleak there, isn't it? Oh, you wouldn't say that if you saw the residential part. Eee, hey, it's the last word. And then another thing, the property is architect designed. Me? I never could take to a bungalow. How do you mean? Well, not going upstairs to bed. Seems all wrong somehow. Still, I'll bet it's set you back a bob or two just the same. No one can say that I haven't worked for it. Have you brought any tea with you? 
Oh, no, I used the last this morning. It seemed daft by a mow and I was coming to old shop for who. Well, pass us a packet and I'll go and put a kettle on. You'll be all right on your own. They won't eat you, you know. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Sharples. I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm a neighbour. Oh. You're a widow woman? Well, yes. I thought so. I'm the caretaker at the Bad Tidings Hall. Oh, that's just across the street, isn't it? What's your place of worship? I don't really do much about it. Oh, I know. C of E. Oh, I wouldn't say oh it's like my really. sister's husband. You know, he was made out of the plumbing where they live, and it give her ideas. She said, we're civic dignitaries now, we must head for church. Within a week, they were received, christened, and confirmed within a fortnight. She was sitting up all night, so in surpluses, I think a packet of baking powder. Where you being buried? <laughs> I don't know that I've given it much thought. Oh, but you should. Think on you don't go to that crematorium down the road while coffins rolling away, they're playing Moonlight and Roses. Oh, I spoke to the superintendent particular. He said, Moonlight and Roses? That's not Moonlight and Roses, that's Andantina. I said, well, Andantina, I know Andantina. I'm rolling away to Crimmon. Are them fancies today's? Yes. I'll take half a dozen and no eclairs. No eclairs. Oh, you're from Esmeralda Street, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Thought so. And weren't you on the bar at the farrier for donkey's years? I was there a tidy while. You got any kids? No. No, I Oh, haven't. you're better off without them. A bottle of bleach. The more bother than they're worth. Esmeralda Street, eh? Very bay window down there, aren't they? Oh, well, you find it very different up here. There's some very funny people in this street. You come across a Mrs. Tanner yet? I can't say I have. You will. <laughs> you want to watch her? She's a bad one. Oh, and while I think on, you owe me an egg. Eh? One of them I had this morning was off. You should have brought it back. Brought it back? I told a pot towel to my nose before I could so much as take it to my back in. And if my word's not good enough, you're quite welcome. Come smell at my dustbin. The yeah. other things will be three and fourpence. I'll put them on slate. You don't need to worry. I'm not thinking of running away. <laughs> she mouthed it. <laughs> Ah, well, it's not the valve, for sure. I told you that. Ah, where's your pump? It's at work. Well, what good do you think it's doing there? Well, you know what they're like there, Dad. You can't leave a thing lying around and knock it off. I've had to hide it. Oh, I'd better get this tyre off. Right. I'll go and get a couple of spoons. Oh, uh, has our Ken said anything to you? About going out tonight, I mean. Yeah. Imperial Hotel. Hey, <laughs> that lad's got the cheek of the devil. Well, it's his own life, isn't it? Go on, that's right. Go on, gang up on me. That's <laughs> the usual. Here, hold on, I'll nip up the road and try to borrow a pump. All right. Show right. me a minute. Right. Show me a minute, Mum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm all Then go on, blame me, then. Nobody's blaming anybody. Where's our Ken? He's next door in Mr. Tatlock's. He spends more time in old Daddy Tatlock's than he does in here. You leave him alone. Mr. Tatlock's all right, Mr. Tatlock is. Look, love, how can I say it at lad now? All right, Ken, you can go. <laughs> he made me look a proper fool, and well, he won't think any better on me for it. Well, suppose he goes whether or no. What sort of fool are you going to look then? Well, that lad should learn to live in his own class. Silk tie, 16 shillings a time. That doesn't come out of his grant and you can't tell me it does. No, I'll tell you straight, it doesn't. I bought it for him and he never asked me. I'm no martyr, Frank, much as you'd like to think it. I just want him to have the chance and he's going to have the best chance I can give him. Hey, we certainly raised a woman. It's no use asking you to take an interest in my collection. But if I didn't have these and the Choral Society, there'd be no for me but to go down to that reading room with all the other old ruins. 
Hey, I went down changing my library book the other day and I popped in for a minute. <laughs> Had to come out, got up top of me. No, nope, but snuffling and turning pages over. I felt like shouting out, get yourselves over here, you'll all be dead inside 12 months. Okay, now, have you seen these new labels? The mine Esther got them typed for me. Yes, you told me. You're very quiet. Sorry, I, I was just thinking about something. No, something wrong? No. Well, not really. Is it, um, is it anything to do with this business at the Imperial Hotel? Well, who told you? Your mother. Bit of a mess, isn't it? Hmm. What are you going to do about it? Well, I've got to go. There was a number to ring if I couldn't, but Susan's bound to have left by now. Oh, that's her name then, eh? Susan? Yes, yeah, Susan Cunningham. I see. And is she a sort of special kind of friend? No, right? not particularly. Just a girl who happens to be in my ear. I see. Well, of course, Mark, you, this is only an idea, but um, couldn't you go down into town and collect her and then bring her back here? I think that would please you, Mother. No, uh, it's no good. I couldn't. Oh, well. You know best. No, I, I just couldn't. You wouldn't understand. Oh, thank you. No, it's just a... Well, Coronation Street. Oh, what's wrong with Coronation Street? I've never heard you talking that way before. Well, I never pretended to sue, or anybody for that matter, that I came from anywhere else, but... Well, I, I just don't fancy the idea of her actually seeing it. Mm, well, it has its good points. I mean, Tequina Sharples. Now, I reckon your friend would lap her up. My place of worship is the Rover's Return, and I'll swap brown ale for me and book any day. <laughs> you see? Oh, yeah, but it's all right talking about it, but I don't want to come in up here. You know, I never thought the day had come when I'd have to say this, but I reckon that that college has turned you into a proper stuck-up little snob, Kenneth <sighs> Barlow. Oh, that's not true. Indy? No, I, I just haven't explained myself properly. I mean... I, is that somebody at my back I door? Hello! Oh, hello, Ida. Come in, love. Oh, Mr. Tashock, is our Ken there? Aye, come in. Oh, thank you. Oh, there you are, love. There's a young lady come for you. It's that friend of yours, the one you were supposed to meet in town. That, that Susan Cunningham. Oh, Oh, Mr. <laughs> Tashock. <laughs> right, now, I think that patch should be all right, big enough. Right, so. Now, what we need now is a bit of friend's chalk rubbed on that, oh, you see. Oh, come in, let me have uh, Now, be careful, let be careful. Is anything I, I can do? Hmm? Oh, yeah, have that a minute. Yeah. So... That's hmm. all right. Hmm. Here, um, our boss comes from around your place. What's his name? Ernie Perrin. Ernest Perrin? Do you know him? Do I not? Shake. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse the oil. I didn't have a chance to wash and my mum was doing spots. Oh, whatever will you think of us? All of us in the middle of the floor. Hello, Susan. Hello, Ken. <laughs> 